will definitely be watching. BBC introducing in Hereford and Worcester with Andrew Marston. So don't forget, you can get in touch anytime you like by sending us an email through the website. But what do you do if you're a drummer and you're asked to join a band like Duran Duran? You say no, of course. Well, that's exactly what David Smalen did of the personal group, the Cohen Brothers. Although he's found immense satisfaction since by learning from some industry greats, including Robert Plant's mate. This week in our On The Record series, put together by Worcester filmmaker Jim Lowe, we explore life behind the drum kits and take an in-depth look into the Worcestershire music scene right now. The band I was in at the time folded and Julian Crook had bought a drum machine and he'd said, have a play with it, see if you can get it to work. And by the time I got round there, he'd managed to programme it to play things much better than I could have played <laughs> at the time. And that was quite a depressing sort of moment. I did audition for a fledgling Duran Duran without knowing who they were and turned them down. I think we were quite sort of patronising and rather condescending at the time. I'd moved down to Pershaw from Birmingham found some guys in the village that I live in now who had all played guitar since they'd been at school and we got together to play for a friend's 40th and I bought a drum kit after 10 years of not having had one and we played covers, we played the local school and I really enjoyed playing and I started taking lessons which is something I'd never done before. We'd often just sit and talk about music, we'd play for a bit and he'd say this is linear drumming, if you listen to David Garibaldi, Tower of Power, he'd recommend things, I go away and listen to it and suddenly my musical horizons just expanded. I was just falling in love with music all over again. Then I moved on to another drum teacher called Andy Edwards who had played with uh, Robert Plant. I'm not a very fancy player, I don't play a lot of fills. And one of the reasons I don't play a lot of fills is, is lack of confidence. You know, playing a musical instrument is like learning any other motor movement. It's like learning to walk. And after a while, you walk without thinking about, I'm going to put my feet in front of each other. And it's the same with drumming. If you learn things and they become part of your psyche, it's much more relaxing. You just do it. Taking lessons from good teachers makes such a difference. The better you feel about playing, the more interesting playing becomes. You know, I really enjoy gigs. I'm able to throw things in that you know, I wouldn't have done five years ago. Well, it's an absolutely amazing series which Jim Blow's put together. And if you go onto our website at bbc.co.uk slash Hereford and Worcester slash introducing, click on tonight's programme page and you'll be able to find all the details and the links across to Jim's YouTube series. Some wonderful greats on the Worcestershire music scene which are featured there, including, of course, the Cohen brothers. We can hear them in the background at the moment who David drums with. And he talks a little bit about some of the audiences and what they expect. It's important for the audience, I think, to have the covers so that there's something they recognise. I mean, people come and watch us and they'll recognise our song. I can go and watch my favourite bands. And you're waiting for the one from the last album that you really liked. You need that connection where you go, oh, I know this one. So rewarding, you know, when you do get a response and people are enjoying it. Why you do it, really, isn't it? There's no point playing to people and they're just going to stand there and look at you or aren't enjoying it. We're a band in our 50s. We're not suddenly going to achieve fame and fortune. I don't think we're really looking for that. We've gone from doing half-hour slots at small pubs to where we're playing on the same circuit as Trevor Burton and Steve Gibbons, who are our heroes from the Birmingham in the, in the 1780s. And it's astonishing that we have this scene going on around here. He's, I don't know what it is about the area, but more than particularly, there is something good going on every night of the week. I think Andy O'Hare is very important, and he goes, he reviews, and he gets behind people. To one extent, there is a music scene for him to go out and review, but to another extent, people like him sort of create the music scene. People go into the X Factor and they say, music is my life, it's the most important thing to me, I really want to be involved in music, but they're not actually doing anything. Whereas if you do want to be involved in music, it's out there. All you've got to do is go out and start to learn your craft by turning up at these open mic nights. See how it goes down, try it out, hone your craft. It's the only way it's going to happen. Well, I think one of the things about open mic nights is a lot of the people that are there to play themselves, so they know that you're feeling a bit nervous and you've got somebody young there. Yeah. He's pretty supportive. It's a bit intimidating. Uh, yeah, so you always get well received. Well, some top, top advice there, and there's plenty more advice as well 
on our website. And in fact, we're rebuilding the advice section at bbc.co.uk slash introducing. We've had some videos up now for a number of years, which talks all about A&R through to promotion, talking to, to about club work, to how to get into DJ and to how to record your sound. But we're after your suggestions on what's missing at the moment. Do get in touch. There's a latest blog posting at bbc.co.uk slash introducing and any kind of advice that you think will be beneficial to you and your music. Do get in touch and we'll see what we can do. Listen to the best interviews online. bbc.co.uk slash Hereford and Worcester slash introducing. It is all about the live tracks, though. 